Hello, everyone. My name is Roxana Madani. I'm a coordinator here for recruitment and admissions with Geese Online Programs, and I will be getting us started for today. I'm going to wait a few seconds just to make sure all of our attendees are joining just before I get started for today. But thank you all so much for joining. Really excited to be able to speak with you all today. I um, just want to make sure you guys are able to see my screen. Does everything look good? Uh, Cassio, are you able to see that too? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Awesome. All right. So welcome, everyone. Thank you all so much for joining the Geese Online Master of Science uh, in Management program today. Uh, I'm really excited to just be able to have this hour uh, to discuss the IMSM program with you all. I do want to mention really quickly, we do have a QR code on the right hand side of our screen. So if you do want to connect with our team, kind of ask any questions about the program, discuss your own options, what kind of credentials are there and a good fit for you, definitely scan that QR code and we'd be able to get you in contact with our team. So uh, that's a great way to kind of just get connected at the start. All right, so uh, I'm going to get started just by letting us know that this is the full hour for the IMSM program. Um, we are included, we are joined by one of our student ambassadors. We have Cassio um, Furtado with us, and he's just going to be highlighting his experiences with Geese Online and the IMSM program specifically. So, Cassio, could you just start off by giving an introduction to yourself, a little bit more about your career and background, as well as why you chose the IMSM program? Sure. Um, I'm Cassio. I'm a Brazilian. Uh, I'm in Brazil right now. I'm uh, from the education industry. And, and I decided to, to choose the program because it allowed me to stay in Brazil working and, and gaining valuable skills. And I can't overstate enough how, how important this program has been to me so far. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Katia. And so just to kind of get us started for today, I do want to let us know that uh, we have a quick little poll just to see where everyone is joining. Um, we are really interested to kind of see where everyone is around the globe. We have a lot of different global learners with us. So if you want to either scan the QR code on the right or type in the pollev.com slash geese online, you can just put in put into the kind of map where you're coming from. We'd love to just be able to see where everyone's joining us. So I'll give a few seconds just to see what kind of responses we get from that. And I'm currently in Peoria, Illinois. So I'm about an hour away from the Champaign-Urbana campus. And it's really great to see that we have people joining us even globally today. So that's really awesome. And I will say this hour long webinar that we have, I am gonna be giving a lot of information, but if you have any questions at all, you can definitely put it into the into the Q&A portion of today's webinar. We have uh, my colleague uh, Grant with us today. So he's gonna be kind of monitoring the chat as well as the Q&A and answering any questions that you might have. Wonderful, we have a lot of global individuals joining us today as well, a lot of people um, in the national areas. Well, so that's really awesome. Okay. So just to kind of give a quick overview of our agenda for today, I'm going to get started since we already kind of did welcome and introductions. I'm going to get started by just giving a bit of information about the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, as well as Geese College of Business. And then I will go a little bit more in depth with Geese Business Online Programs. We'll dive into the IMS program overview, discuss the curriculum and content, as well as just a few of the application process information, tips and tricks, and anything else that we can for our prospective learners. And then I want to mention again, we do have time a little bit at the end for some q and I'll try to keep to today's presentation a little bit more brief so we can get to that. But um, if we don't get to Q&A at the end, please use the Q&A feature uh, in the chat so that we can kind of get those answered, those questions answered for you. So to start with the University of Illinois, we have about approximately 35,000 undergrad students and 20,000 graduate students. The University of Illinois is a land grant uh, institution, so we're very committed to providing life changing access to education uh, with an affordable cost for all of our learners across the globe. So a few stats about the university. We are ranked a number 12 public university by the US News and World Report. We are also a top five university with NSF uh, funded research. And then we also have over 5,000 alumni. So our university has one of the, the largest alumni organizations that are going to be a very huge support to you as a GEESE student and as alum as well. 
Specifically within Geese College of Business, we were ranked the number one business school innovation of the decade by Poets and Quants. And they also gave us the 2022 MBA Program of the Year Award. So that was a really good ranking as well. We were also ranked number one in accounting faculty by the BYU uh, accounting faculty rankings. Um, and then we are also a top 10 public undergraduate university business school university business school in the in the nation with our university. And finally, we have over 81,000 uh, Geese business alumni specifically that are able to connect with you, connect with you and network uh, with events and online platforms that we have. So I do wanna touch a little bit more on just Geese business online programs in, in general. Um, Geese business uh, online was built on three main foundational pillars and that is flexibility, stackability and being online by design. But what do each of these kind of mean? So flexibility, Geese Online is basically designed to fit your learner journey. So all of our programs are completely online, 100% uh, with no in-person commitments. We know you're all working professionals and you all have your own lives. So this program really allows you to kind of get that schedule and routine set together while also advancing your professional career at the same time. It's also very flexible with its pacing and degree planning. So you're kind of able to choose uh, the number and the order of classes that you have within those eight week terms. You can take up to two classes per, per term or, or also bring it down to one. And then finally, um, we do have a very flexible tuition structure. So with that, we have the pay as you go model. And so you're only paying for the classes that you're essentially registered for. You're not paying a lump sum for a, an entire program out of nowhere without actually taking the courses. So that's definitely very helpful. Uh, the second thing we have is stackability. So Geese Online really works to ensure that our education is accessible to all of our students. With the Geese credentials, you're able to stack them, work together to kind of create an option that fits your journey uh, and also make sure that the unique option gives you an ability to kind of test drive uh, a course if you're not ready to get into that graduate certificate or degree program. You're essentially still able to gain those valuable skills, explore your options, and build your educational path on your own. So I will touch a little bit more on stackability options in the next slide, but I did want to just mention that as well. And finally, online by design. So we do de design our credentials to cater to over thousands of learners worldwide. This gives the ability for basically anyone to participate in the program wherever you are in the world. So we have a lot of students that do travel, whether that's for work, vacation, just personal life stuff. And so this, this program really gives you that ability to learn from just about anywhere. And all of this is done without having to actually sacrifice any of that interaction and collaboration that you would be having with your peers and faculty. So our programs are really set in place to ensure students are getting that best educational experience while also creating a solid infrastructure for all of our online credentials. And I do want to mention that Geese Business has been providing this online de delivery since 2016. So we are one of the first on, uh, online MBA programs that are affordable and also very accessible to all of our learners. Uh, Cassio, could you explain a little bit more about why you chose Geese and what kind of resonated with you with these pillars as you're going through your program? Yeah, uh, as you were describing uh, the stackability and the flexibility, I was thinking about my life and how that worked well for me. So uh, actually, that was it, uh, because I wanted to uh, stay in Brazil and continue working. I needed to do that. And and the program allows me to to study when I can. So Usually I, I, I do many of my tasks early in the morning before I go to work or in the evenings or during the weekends. Uh, the, the classes, uh, I, I'm sure you, you'll talk about it, but we have the possibility of, of, of watching online and participating online. But at the same time, if you can't in a given week, you can watch the recording at any time. So, so this helps because uh, imagine in, in a week you have an appointment during the class time and you can watch the class on Saturday morning on Sunday morning, I have done this many times. Uh, and also you have chances of, of interacting with the teachers uh, in office hours, uh, in live sessions. Uh, so uh, really it, it has been uh, tremendous because of this flexibility, the, the, the ease of adapting the, the course load and the classes to, to one's life. So this is very important. Wonderful, thank you for that. 
And just to kind of go a little bit more in depth on the stackability options that we have with Geese Credentials. So we want to be sure we're reaching you wherever you are in your learner's journey. So this model really shows just how each credential is able to build into the next one. Uh, it starts with our MOOCs, and these are massive online open courses. So basically free online courses that students are able to take uh, to take through the Coursera platform. It is asynchronous, so you're taking it on your own time and at your own pace, and it gives you that foundational skill, uh, skill area knowledge. So you're able to just understand a bit more about those foundational information that you would uh, for specific skill sets. Two of those Coursera MOOCs are able to be stacked into a four credit Illinois course, and every one of our uh, four credit Illinois courses have two MOOCs in them. So uh, with the four credit courses, and that's the dark blue one that you see in the second one, uh, we have that gives you basically transcriptable credit from the University of, University of Illinois. And so two of these MOOCs, as well as a high engagement aspect, so kind of like a synchronous portion that's on our Canvas Illinois platform, that's also added in to be able to create the four credit course. And this option really just helps you feel out the program. Program It really is a great option if you're curious, but not sure uh, how to get started. And if you wanna start, but have something that would be able to stack into either a graduate certificate or a degree. And you are able to take three of those four credit courses to stack them into a graduate certificate. With a graduate certificate, it gives you that kind of mastery in specific subjects. Uh, and we do have over, we have about 13 graduate certificate options right now. So I will touch on that super briefly in this webinar, but grad certs are just made up of 12 credit hours that help you kind of get started learning with the Geese Online programs. All of our graduate certificates are stackable into an iDegree program. So whether that's the IMBA, IMSM, or IMSA, and just one extra level of stackability that I think is pretty interesting, uh, the IMSM and the IMSA are also able to be stacked into the IMBA as well. So if you're taking the IMSA program, you really enjoy the classes and you enjoy the program in general, you're able to stack that later on into an IMBA program as well. Um, Cassio, could you describe a little bit about just your experience with the stackability? Did you have any of those options or credentials at all, or did you not really do it? Did you just go straight into the MSM? No, I actually did it all. Uh, I, 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 took, uh, I, I took the MOOCs, uh, be even before enrolling, I took one. Uh, and then, uh, then I, I, I went from there because each course uh, at the MSM, you need to complete two MOOCs for each course. So you need to go into Coursera and complete two uh, uh, MOOCs. Then you uh, you also have a Canvas component to that, uh, that there is a, a high impact, uh, more demanding uh, tasks. So I, I did the MOOCs, then I did the four credit courses. I earned a graduate certificate already uh, in, in global business problems, and I'm finishing the, the IMSM. Uh, I just finished yesterday my seventh course out of nine courses. That's amazing. So you're very close to the finish line. <laughs> That's awesome. Yes. yes. Awesome. Okay, great. So I'm going to stop really quickly and just ask another super fast poll just to see what might be holding back some of you that are attending just from pursuing a graduate education. So if you want to put into the poll, whether you want to put it in the chat or you want to um, use the QR code or the web way to get into the form, uh, all you can do is just answer if the cost, the online format, time commitment, ROI, or any other kind of difficulties are kind of giving you that hesitancy towards um, pursuing a graduate education. Cost and time commitment, I could definitely see a lot of our students uh, put that into the um, chat and stuff like that. It's definitely something our program really values, kind of focusing on time commitment and managing that for our students. So that's really great to hear. And I'll try to be able to answer a few of these as we go through. Okay, awesome. So just really quickly to touch on our graduate certificates, this is a really great option if you're trying to stack um, the graduate certificate into an MSM, but you're not really sure if you want to start with MSM. So we do have the 13 graduate certificate options. They're all made up of the IMBA, IMSM, and IMSA courses. So that's kind of why that stackability feature is able to come into play. And earning a graduate certificate gives you those 12 hours of University of Illinois credit, and you're able to earn a transcriptable uh, certificate upon completion. The application process is pretty straightforward, and then you're able to choose if you want to stack that graduate certificate into an I degree or just keep it standalone. Uh, so for more details on all of our graduate certificates, we have that all listed on the website. And uh, Grant, if it's possible, if you can add that into the chat just so people can kind of look around during the webinar or after. But I do want to give just a, a brief list of what we do have. So it's separated based off of general business and then accounting specific as well.
And so these are all the different offerings that we have. Uh, now to kind of really dive into the MSM program, I kind of want to discuss a little bit more about what a management degree is and who it's for. So essentially, this program is for individuals that are looking to develop those leadership skills within their career and kind of advance on that. So with an MSM degree, you'll be able to develop uh, confidence by expanding communication and leadership skills. You'll understand and also be able to kind of discuss those new technologies, global changes, as well as market trends. You'll also be able to apply integrative thinking and also problem solving skills across a wide variety of um, areas. So finance, marketing, operations and accounting is all in that. And the IMSM degree is made up of several different type of learners. So we do have individuals coming from that non-business background looking to kind of develop their leadership and management base. We have individuals with that business background, but are looking to pivot towards including management and um, a bit more into towards leadership in their skill set. And then finally, we have highly technical backgrounds. So they're looking more to broaden just their formal business background knowledge. Uh, all of these are different individuals that we have, but pretty easy for everyone to be able to kind of engage with others within the course. And lastly, you will learn a lot of skills that are immediately impactful on the current career down to each weekly session. So if you're really working towards the ROI with the program, this is for you. So faculty members are really using those project based learnings within the group work and also with case studies that we have in the course to kind of coordinate with their live sessions and make sure you guys are learning those real uh, real world world scenarios as well. Uh, so Cassio, could you t discuss a little bit more about the impact the courses have had in your career so far? Have you been able to put that in any of your current uh, work situations at all or not too much so far? Uh, yeah, uh, the, the courses, um, some people answered that they were worried about the difficulty of the courses. I just wanted to make a, uh, a quick note about that. I'm from a non-business background. I had no experience in, in business. I, I'm from the humanities. Uh, so I, I studied political science, international relations before. Uh, and if you apply yourself, the, the courses, uh, they, they start in a basic level and they go from there. So you even people who are from a non-business background should be able to master it uh, without any problem. So difficulty shouldn't be an issue uh, if you want to begin. So, and in my life, uh, everything uh, is incorporated straight ahead from the courses because, as you said, they are very practical. Uh, each week in, in most of the courses, you have to, to read a case. Usually the cases are from Harvard University. They prepare course packets that you have to, uh, to buy. Uh, they are very cheap, very reasonable price. Uh, and then uh, you read these cases and the questions and the coursework are about the cases. So they're not just theoretical classes. They are on the cases and, and taking lessons from the cases. And some professors, uh, they even go as further as, as, as going to Champagne and recording, uh, recording lessons uh, in the street, in restaurants, in stores, to, to try to give uh, a very practical sense of everything. So it integrates to my life and, and to my career, and, and, and it should happen to most people like that. Wonderful. Thank you for touching on uh, just kind of the faculty based interactions and stuff they did, that they do as well. It's really helpful. And so just to give some basics of the IMSM and like some facts, uh, the degree is going to be 12,492 total for tuition and fees. And the program is a total of 36 credit hours. So 24 of those credit hours are going to be from your core curriculum and 12 of them will be elective courses. Typically, it takes about a one to two year timeline for our uh, program to uh, be completed for the students, but the graduate college does give you a max of about five years to finish the degree. So if you do need to take breaks in between, you are able to do that with this program. And it really does help fit your schedule uh, and fit your routine better with your needs and advancing your career at the same time. So if you do want to take uh, the one course at a time, it would typically put you in that two year timeline, or you could take up to the two courses at one time with those eight week terms, and that would put you within that one year timeline. So we do have really good sample schedules on our website as well. If you do want to see what those different timelines look like and how you could kind of schedule your classes um, that is available on our site as well. 
a bit more with the class profile. Uh, this is a really interesting part that I really like looking at. Um, the average age for our students is about 34 years old with almost nine years of work experience. So there is no requirement for the MSM to have work experience, but uh, the MBA does require a three year minimum. So um, it is different with the MSM, but we still have a very mature population that has generally a little bit more work experience. Uh, we do have international learners up to 32% and 86 of our of the countries uh, globally are represented. We also have 48 US states and uh, territories represented as well. And then finally, we do have about 144 uh, Fortune 500 companies represented with our student group. So there's that as well as a very huge alumni network that's be that's able for you to be able to connect with and keep you in touch. And then finally, uh, career impact. Uh, I know a lot of people are looking for return on investment with a program, and I'm sure that's very important to a lot of you joining us or just considering a graduate degree. Um, we do ask a lot of our graduating students about their experience and specifically how satisfied they were with the program and the quality. So essentially, we're trying to find out if the MSF program did put any impact to um, their professional career at all. With that, we have had 42% uh, of our students receive a promotion, a job offer, or accept a new position during the IMSM program. We have 28% uh, of our students receiving a pay increase during the program. And an overall 94% of our graduates feeling overall satisfied with the program quality of the MSM. So I think it's really nice to be able to just have that data and show you the probability of getting specific ROIs that you're looking for with this program. Uh, Cassio, could you talk a little bit more about the ROI for you and what that kind of meant when you were first coming into the program at all, as well as if it's really done anything since you've been uh, finishing up now? Yeah, uh, in, in my case, uh, it has given me the will to, to go on to a PhD in the area. So uh, in my case, I enjoyed it so much studying these issues and the, the intersection of, of politics and business and multinational corporations and strategy that I decided to go to go ahead and, and apply for a PhD. So in my case, uh, it has opened my eyes and uh, to this possibility to studying these issues uh, in more detail. So as I said, I'm in education, so I, I teach and I manage in education, but I became so passionate about these issues that I'm thinking of, of joining a PhD program next year. That is wonderful. Thank you so much. And so now to kind of dive into the curriculum for the MSM, uh, you will earn your MSM with 36 credit hours. So the first would be 24 uh, credit hours being put to the core curriculum. These are six required courses that you will need to take. So we do have a lot of flexibility with um, the program and just being able to do the degree planning. But some of these courses that are the core curriculum, you might need to work a little bit more to get into those classes at the right time. So we have a really great advising team that's able to kind of just work with you through that and make sure um, you're able to get the schedules that you're looking for. And then um, with this structure, um, you also have 12 credit hours that are with electives that you'd have to take. So you're able to really dive into courses that you're interested in, as well as try others that you might not have enough knowledge or just skills in and would like to progress on that as well. And a very quick note about the I. So this just refers to the method of delivery with the program. When we first launched the IMBA in 2016, we already had a residential program. So this just kind of differentiates it for us. There is no I on your transcript, no I on your diploma. You will be basically getting a, a degree that's similar to if you were taking a residential program. And uh, so our faculty is really amazing at Geese. We do have over 215 full-time faculty at Geese College of Business, and that's across the accountancy and business admin fields. So that really includes marketing, management, supply chain, operations, entrepreneurship, analytics, finance, and a bunch more. Uh, more than half of the Geese faculty are very actively engaged in research, and that is just changing how business is done and how it's taught. So that's what they're really focusing on with their work. Uh, we also have over 70 faculty members that teach in our online programs and they have that industry and, ex, uh, and research expertise. So our, our, our faculty is really committed to creating that experiential hands-on learning while also focusing on global perspectives as well. Uh, Cassio, could you touch on just like the online experience, working with live sessions, how that's been for you? I know um, it's kind of different with the different programs that you're taking, but how does it feel just going into the live sessions or just watching the recordings even? I'm recognizing some of my teachers here, uh, Professor Denise Lewin-Lloyd and Professor Torelli. Uh, uh, 
Uh, I enjoy very much because, uh, as I said, uh, you, you have multiple options. Uh, it's much better, of course, if you can uh, plan ahead and, and just uh, watch the live sessions because the, the professors are really, first of all, they, they all have PhDs at top universities in the United States and, and the world. They have not only the, the educational background, but they also have uh, experiences at top corporations in the United States. Uh, ad agencies for marketing at, at global companies. Uh, they, they are very experienced in the marketing. They really know from experience what they are, they are talking about and what they're teaching. So I enjoy uh, watching the live sessions and participate and, and, and get into discussions, asking questions. But as I said, if sometimes you can't do it, uh, if you're worried about that and, and if that is, is holding you back, uh, you can still watch the recording. Uh, whenever you can. So this is helpful sometimes. Uh, and also uh, another aspect that I should highlight, uh, all the professors in all courses, they have office hours. So uh, apart, in addition from the live session, if you have additional questions, if you have uh, issues, uh, doubts about the program, anything, you can go into the office hours. And, and of course, there will be fewer people. So you have the opportunity to, to know your teachers better, to, to have uh, uh, discussions with them. They will uh, review issues before exams and, and major assignments. They'll try to help you. So it's a very collaborative environment. And, and the live sessions and the office hours, uh, uh, they are all uh, in there to, to help you. And even if that, doesn't, that, that, that isn't enough, you can send them an email and they'll answer you. That is such a great point. Our office hours are a really big thing that a lot of students mention. Uh, I've had people say that there are sometimes three or four students, sometimes a few more, and then sometimes no one's in there. So you have a very one-on-one -on -one session with the, the faculty member, and that's really helpful for a lot of students as well. And then they also have appointments too. So they're very, very flexible in the time that they're able to give to the students. Uh, just to kind of give a really quick um, introduction to what the live sections look like, I did want to share a super brief um, video. So this is a very popular question we get a lot from our prospective students, and that's just like how the lectures look like, what it kind of entails. So I do want to share uh, this quick video from our professor Hayden Noel at Keys College of Business and uh, just show you what it looks like. <laughs> Hello and welcome from wherever in the world you are. One thing you'll know by now, you realize you are not going to be able to just sit back. You got excited. Absolutely. Happy. <laughs> I do not believe in exams. It will be a collaborative event, something you do over time with others. And that's what we do in this class. I want you to put up your hands and tell me two associations from the case. Tradition comes to mind. Associated with a, a working man. Also inexpensive and very accessible. And my class is by saying, all of you, go out in the world and be successful. Okay, and so that's Professor Hayden Noel. If you guys have seen him before or not, uh, he's a really great professor at our, our, our faculty at Keys Online. And so our students have a lot of positive feedback with these sessions. It really is a really good way to kind of keep that flexibility for your learners. So if you're not able to make live sessions, you do have all those recording on Canvas as well. So now I kind of want to get a little bit more into the curriculum and I will discuss a bit more about the online, to, uh, online by design. So we do have two components to our coursework. The first one is the asynchronous portion, and this is all done on Coursera, as Casio mentioned. So it's basically your quote unquote textbook for the course. Uh, this is where all those uh, non-credit MOOCs are housed, and that's where you're uh, doing that all on your own time. So it's very fit for people that are looking for career aligned training. Uh, Coursera also offers digital certificates, so you're able to audit the class for free, but they do have digital certificates from Coursera that itself so that you're able to uh, pay, I think, $39 a month and you can get that digital certificate. But I do want to mention this is different from the graduate certificates you'd be taking at Illinois. So with those, it's completely housed on a different platform and very different. <laughs> and then so with the asynchronous portion, this is all through Coursera that you get enrolled with and the content includes videos, uh, quizzes, assignments, as well as peer evaluations. And you are required to complete the asynchronous portion in order to earn a graduate certificate or a degree with Illinois. 
And the second portion is the synchronous or kind of that high engagement aspect of the course. So this is done on the Canvas platform, and this is similar to any kind of university Blackboard platform that you'd have. Um, the Canvas platform is where you're going to be interacting with faculty, uh, working with your peers on a weekly basis. And uh, it's really built on those MOOCs, so you have the ability to dig into the content, uh, see what that stuff from Coursera is, and apply it to real world scenarios. Um, we have weekly live sessions that are hosted by our faculty, and it's done at different times so that we can ensure those global learners are getting a chance to join in at a reasonable time. And they are also all recorded and put on Canvas. So as Cassio mentioned, if you're not able to make any of those sessions or one of those sessions in the week, you do not have to. You're able to go on Canvas after and just watch the recording. Uh, with the live sessions, they do have breakout sessions, and then sometimes they will have you participate with the professor on either problems or questions. So it really does give you that kind of engagement uh, and live engagement if you're looking for that within the program. And then there are also projects, case studies. Some of our courses do have exams, and then there are peer-driven discussions and tutoring options as well. And finally, what we mentioned with the faculty office hours, they're trying to ensure basically that they have to give you that uh, the faculty support since it is a fully online uh, program and platform. So our, our faculty really works to try to make sure our students are getting as much as they can from them. Uh, Cassio, could you really quickly discuss how the two different components worked for you with the Coursera and then the Canvas platform? Was it hard kind of navigating through that or pretty straightforward and easy? No, because it's really well, well designed, well done. Uh, the All courses are eight week courses. So uh, we have eight week courses uh, in each uh, Coursera course has four weeks. So what usually happens is that the, you, the, the content that the professor is working on the, the live session will cover, for example, week one of Coursera. Then he will go to live session two, week two of Coursera, and then uh, it goes on. So it's important that you watch the Coursera uh, uh, videos before class, because when you if you watch them beforehand, then you go to class and you already, of course, you have a basic knowledge uh, about what the professor will talk about. Because after that, after having this basic knowledge, then you can join the discussions, uh, you can ask questions, you can, you can do better. Uh, because the Coursera gives you a, a basic outlook on each, uh, each topic. And then the, the live session will build on it and the readings will build on it and the discussions will build on it. So they, they work together. You, you need to go there and, and, and read and watch the videos and, and complete the quizzes. They're very basic quizzes in the Coursera platform. And then you can go to the live session and to the, the assignments in, in Canvas. So, but you need you need to be on top of it. You you can't you know uh, just uh, wait for the end of the course to do it all because then it will be too much. That's a very good point, and I do know a lot of our students try to get onto that Coursera platform a bit earlier than the course uh, week schedule. So just being able to go in at your own pace and make sure you're getting in, getting the information ahead in ahead of the course uh, the weekly courses. For example, next week uh, I'm starting the finance class. Uh, and, and they allow you to, to, to access the, the course content and syllabus uh, one week ahead. Mm -hmm. So if you want to have a head start, you can do it. Yep, and it's a really great way. I know a lot of our priority deadlines also give you that ability. So if you do want to get that early registration into the courses, get engaging with the, the students and the faculty earlier, that's a great way to get started with that as well. So to change gears a little bit more and talk about the networking within the program, I think this is a very important aspect and important for a lot of people that are trying to just make an impact within their career. So how we try to support that is through two ways. We do have college-led opportunities, and this is stuff like our iConnects, Immersions, and iConverge, which is our annual uh, on in-person event uh, in the fall. And these are just ways for us to kind of get the program, helping our students mingle, whether we're hosting that nationally or internationally in our iConnects and Immersions. With student-led opportunities, we have a lot of different group work opportunities within the course structure. And then we also have a really cool online platform. We have Workplace, which is kind of like a, a LinkedIn Facebook mashup for our students and our alums. So just being able to connect with them um, and be able to get involved with all the stuff before the course. We also do have student-led meetups, and that's often uh, where Workplace comes into play as well, since we have our students discussing on Workplace. A lot of students say, hey, I'm in this area and I want to connect with students. And then they're able to get people just in the general area that they are to be able to connect with the current individuals with Geese Online. Uh, 
And then uh, we also have a really great ambassador program, which Cassio is part of. So it's a really cool way to just get the, the current students uh, online experience with Geese and be able to share that with prospective students as well. And then finally, we do have the IGBA. So that is the Illinois Graduate Business Association. And it's sort of kind of like a student council for the program. It's a really great way for you to kind of connect with the administrative and leadership uh, teams with Geese as well. So to go a little bit more in depth with these different options, we have immersions and immersions are a really great opportunity for you to travel with the class and work on a real life business project while meeting with stakeholders in the area, as well as checking out some of the cultural aspects of the place that you're in. So we typically do about four a year and they are about a week long. It really depends on the kind of immersion you're doing. So we have virtual immersions, we have in-person domestic immersions and also in-person international. Uh, it really focuses on getting that cultural immersion uh, in place, work ex works on networking, and it is case competi uh, competitive. It is a little bit more different if you're deciding to do an in-person one versus a virtual. I know that we had three so far. We had one in South Africa, Malaysia, and Singapore for this year. And then I believe today is actually the first day of the virtual immersion to Japan. So really cool different options that you have. And usually it's about a capacity of 30 to 50 students. It really varies uh, with the type of trip that you're taking, but a really cool way for you to kind of just immerse yourself into the different global perspectives. Uh, we do have iConverge, and this is our annual event hosted each fall. We just had it in September this past month. So it's a three-day networking event where we have speakers. We have all of our current student as well as alum that are there connecting, discussing professional development. Uh, this past year, our theme was entrepreneurship. And then last year, I believe, was networking. So it's just really uh, an event where we focus on a specific theme, and we work off of that for that. Uh, I actually got to attend my first one uh, this year, and I personally really, really liked it. I thought it was a cool experience to kind of just attend that, see how the students are engaging. Uh, Cassio, how did you ever attend an iConverge yet or not yet so far? <laughs> I'm in that picture. I am you are? That. You're in the picture yeah. for 23. Okay, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, I, I, Can you I, I went the to experience? that. Yeah, I had never been to to the university and to, to Champagne, and, and I made the point of going in 2023. I didn't go this year. But uh, I, I was there. This, this was just uh, outside of the, of the center where, where the university plays basketball. So uh, I, I was there. It was a wonderful opportunity. Uh, we had uh, so, uh, so, uh, so many lectures and uh, networking opportunities. I made many friends. Uh, after this, I, I went to Chicago to meet with friends I had made there. So um, yeah, so it's, it, was, it was wonderful. The same time combining uh, educational opportunities, uh, leadership, uh, and talking about pivoting careers, uh, and it was was very nice. Thank you so much, and it's definitely a great way to connect. I feel like I I was able to see people and kind of put those faces to the names that we're always seeing online. So it's really really great to see that. I was trying to find myself here. <laughs> the picture. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so <laughs> focusing on now workplace, this is a really great way. I mentioned the LinkedIn Facebook mashup that we have. So all of our current students and alum are able to connect and kind of work on that professional development online with one another. And you're just able to see a few different options. So a lot of our students use that to really engage with others and connect as much as they can. So uh, with student meetups, this is definitely something very unique we have in our program. Since it is a big network of global students all over the MSM and also the other I degree programs, there's a lot of ways for you to kind of connect with peers and alumni to be able to help you advance in your career. So these are just a few places that our students have been able to connect. Uh, it is generally student led. So like I said, a lot of our students are connecting through Workplace, just connecting through iConnects, different workshops that we have and setting up those student meetups to gather together. So now just focusing a little bit more on our support and what we can provide with Geese Online. So we do have a student and academic success team, and they really give all the information with degree requirements and policies, degree planning. They have express advising as well as open office hours, and then they have one-on-one -on -one appointments as well. So a lot of different ways for you to kind of connect and get uh, introduced with the student and academic success. And then we also have a really great support team with our emails, so they're able to respond as fast as possible and just be able to support you through that online platform platform. Uh, a bit more with the career resources that we have. So within Workplace, we do have a career strategy group, and this is where our students and alum come to kind of network together, job search, and also post job openings. So if you are interested in that, that would be uh, an option that you'd be able to have. We have Big Interview, and that just offers training courses and kind of hands-on practice with mock interviews that are tailored to your specific uh, area of interest as well as career background. 
We do have Handshake, and that's basically all of the students at the University of Illinois, uh, they have an, uh, access to this job board as well as career fair information. It's basically a campus uh, recruiting platform that's designed for more of our residential and on-campus students, but our online students also have this access. But I will say uh, online students might find the, the workplace, uh, career strategy workplace group, as well as some of just like the other professional job boards we have a little bit more helpful towards the online courses. And then finally, we have VMOC, and that's kind of a resume career development tool that just helps you develop your resume. So it provides feedback as well as advising things on how to enhance your resume. So another quick poll that I have for you all, if you've already started the application, if you want to just put into the into the poll or either into the chat, what looked like either the most time consuming or maybe the most difficult part for you within the application. That could be the resume personal statement. We do have the two recommendation uh, forms, unofficial transcripts, uh, work experience, as well as English proficiency for our international students. So if you wanna put it either in the chat or just put it into the poll, what seems a little bit more uh, struggling for you as you're going through the application process? And I'll keep it up for maybe a minute or two just to kind of see if there's anything we can help with during this presentation. But if it does seem pretty straightforward and nothing seems too hard, I could continue on. I'll just give it another second or so. Okay, awesome. Got a lot of responses. So uh, personal statement, I definitely see that as well as resume. Okay, wonderful. So I will touch on all of these a little bit more in the next few slides as well. And if you have any specific questions, please put that into the chat and we'll be able to answer that as well. So with application requirements, just to get into the MSM program, uh, the minimum requirements to apply do include a bachelor's degree as well as a minimum GPA of 3.0 on that 4.0 scale or a equivalent to that. You will need a professional resume highlighting your work experience. So this just helps us review and kind of identify if you're a good fit for, for the program that you're applying to. You will need to submit academic history. So we accept unofficial transcripts during the application process, but you will need to submit an official transcript if you are admitted. So that is required by the graduate college, I believe by the first semester. Otherwise you will get a hold on your uh, class, on your, on your student account. So we'll be able to work with you on that, but definitely something uh, you will need to consider. And then international students do need to provide a certificate of degree as well as mark sheets. And if they are not in English, we will also need a translation in English as well. You will need to submit a personal statement and that's about 500 words or less on just the interest into the program and just helping explain uh, how this can help you advance your career is what we're really looking for. And then there's also the two to three short uh, personal answer statements that you have to give and all of these prompts and everything is included in the application. Uh, you will need two recommenders and this isn't going to be too hard. It's just providing their name and email. So then we will be able to send them um, a quick form with just about eight to 10 questions that they rate you on, as well as a few uh, paragraph form responses that they need to respond to. So it's not necessarily a huge lift on their side, but I know getting recommendations could be a little bit tricky. Uh, so we just want to make sure this is a very smooth and easy process for you. And then we do also give uh, your recommenders a few days after you submit the application, even if it's after the deadline, just for them to be able to submit that in, as long as you've submitted by the deadline date. And then uh, finally, for international students, we do need English proficiency uh, test scores since that's required by the graduate college. We do have a page that outlines all of those requirements on scores, and I believe there's also an essay waiver. So if you worked for a company where uh, English is the primary language, you could also submit um, that with your application. There is no uh, GRE or GMAT, so um, this is really a beneficial point for a lot of people that are trying to apply with our program. And then we do have a scholarship opportunity. We do have Coursera, and I believe that's twice a year where it's offered. It is offered with the priority one deadline for the application. And um, I think our deadline for P1 just uh, passed, so the scholarship application is now done for a January start. With uh, the Coursera scholarship, it will reimburse about 70% of your tuition if you're chosen and um, the application for the scholarship is within the application submission. So it is a pretty competitive scholarship and if you do want to apply for this or any of the other scholarships, you would need to submit the scholarship essay as well as your application at the same time by the priority one deadline. Uh, scholarships that are accepted, scholarships are not accepted for any deadlines that are after the P1 deadline.
And then finally, we do have uh, the performance based admissions track. So that's uh, the PAT track. It's a really great pathway for people that are maybe not meeting those minimum requirements for GPA or anything like that, or that if they just want to take a trial before getting into the MSM program. So with the PAT track, you would need to take um, three courses and be able to earn a B or higher in at least two of them with a GPA of 3.0. And with this, uh, you would be applying the same way as you would if you're a degree student. You would just start as a non-degree student. And then after we evaluate your uh, your grades for those three courses, you'd automatically be admitted into the degree, the, uh, degree track. Sorry about that. And so this is a really amazing opportunity for folks that just kind of don't meet those minimum requirements. And with the application review, it takes typically two to three weeks for us to review your materials, uh, reach out if there are any missing materials at all, uh, or a decision, or we will invite you to interview. So upcoming deadlines, if you are ready to get started in the MSM program as early as January, uh, this is definitely for you. We do have um, the P priority two deadline. So our priority one deadline just passed this first week in October. Uh, the next one is coming up on November 7th. And with the priority two deadlines, you will get an app fee waiver. Uh, if you apply, you will get early access to those networking platforms. So like Workplace, Coursera, all of those things that you're able to kind of connect with, you'd be able to get in advance of starting in January. And then you'd also get priority registration. So a bit earlier access into the, some of those courses that you need to take. And if you do take the priority deadline, you would start either in January or March. And um, there are a few other deadlines after this as well. So with the final deadline, we do have the December 2nd deadline for all of our I degrees. Uh, this is the last deadline to apply in January. So all of your applications are gonna receive full consideration and you're able to start in January or March. And then finally, we do have a late start application. This is only for the MSM and MBA, uh, MBA programs as well. This is not for IMSA, but you are able to apply by February 6th to be able to get into the program uh, in the spring, but at a later start. So in March is when you'd be able to start. And this is the final deadline in total for all of our spring start classes. So hopefully you were able to learn a little bit more about the IMSM program and just uh, Geese Online in general. So I hope this program uh, really gave you kind of like a breakdown of our flexibility and the different opportunities that we have with engagement and just networking in the program and definitely just focusing on the innovative course structure and networking opportunities we have. If you do have any questions at all, please feel free to put them in the chat right now. Um, but I will definitely stay on just for a few minutes to answer any questions that we might have about the program, about the IMSM in general, and get those answers for you. Um, otherwise, I will say thank you all so much for joining. It was wonderful just being able to discuss the MSM program. Cassio, thank you so much for sharing your experiences with the Geese Online program. It was wonderful getting that insight from you and kind of understanding a little bit more since you're the expertise in all this stuff. Uh, so it was really helpful. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope to have helped you. Yes, definitely. And hopefully, uh, if any students have any questions for Cassio, please feel free to put sure. that in the chat. Um, and I'll stay, stick on for a few more minutes. Cassio, if you're not able to, definitely feel free to hop off. But if you can't stay, that would be awesome, too. Yeah. And yeah. just before we end for today, I will put this really quick um, poll if you want to answer and just see how you feel about the IMSM program after this webinar. If we answered most of your questions or if you still have any, please feel free to put that in the chat or um, after this, we'll just be sticking on to answer any questions that you may have. And I'll stay on here for just maybe one more minute and then I will go really quickly to our uh, contact us page. So if you have any questions at all and we're not able to get to it in this webinar, you can feel free to either scan the QR code and connect with our team, reach out through email or by phone, whichever way works best for you. We are definitely ha happy to help out. So thank you all so much and I hope you have a great evening. And I do see a question about the IMSM being stackable with the campus MBA. So we do have a few restrictions on that, but you would need to discuss with us. Sometimes the MSM can be uh, put into the MBA as a residential program, but we would need to just work with some specific restrictions that we'd have on that as well.
If anyone has any questions at all for Casio before we jump off, definitely feel free to put that in there. If not, um, sounds good. <laughs> Just want to be sure we ask any questions that are there. Casio, do you have anything? Yeah, you there's a question here. Uh, can you mm -hmm. please touch again briefly on the curriculum, the asynchronous page explaining how it works? Uh, I guess that's the, the Coursera component, correct? Uh, because Synchronous they, would be the Canvas component. Yeah. Uh, so there are two two uh, two components. You you go to the Coursera where you have the videos and 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 basic uh, basic understanding of the subject for each week, and then you have the Canvas one, uh, which is linked to the university system that you need to log in with your your ID. And in the Canvas component, each week probably you have an assignment. So you have quizzes which week for the for the Coursera part of it uh, to and then you can you can earn the the Coursera certificate but for the university to get credit through university then you need to go to the canvas component uh, log in with your net id and each week you have the for example the recording of the live session there and uh, also a task that you need to complete and each professor will set a deadline. Usually it's Tuesday evening, uh, 23.59. So uh, by 11.59 p.m. each Tuesday, you need to submit the assignment for that week. Uh, and, and, and they will break down, for example, 100 points. Each week uh, you have uh, one week, 10 points, 12 points, 15 points. So you have multiple opportunities to, to add points to, to have a good grade. And I saw we do have a question about the Coursera component. That part is mandatory. So if you are getting an MSM or even a graduate certificate degree, you would need to complete both the Coursera as well as the Canvas platform, uh, the, both of the, uh, the components. So asynchronous as well as synchronous. But the Coursera platform is asynchronous, so it's all just done on your own time and at your own pace. Yeah. And... Could you discuss super quickly? I know we're about to end in about like a minute or two, but uh, maybe like a little bit more about the assignments and how those kind of look. Are they a little bit in depth with like essays or discussion boards? What kind of uh, things you see? Uh, in, in the Coursera, you, you have just basic quizzes. In, in, in order to complete Coursera, you need to reach 80%. So you just need to take the quizzes, pass the quizzes, have 80% in the Coursera, and then that's done. But that does not count toward your final grade at university. Mm -hmm. For the grade at university, then there's Canvas. And depending on the subject, on the course, uh, you have to, to, to answer multiple questions. It could be a quiz, a multiple choice quiz. It could be an essay. It could be uh, an essay about a, uh, about a case, a Harvard case. It could be the solution to a case. So it could happen in, 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 in a variety of ways but always integrating the knowledge from the live sessions from the Coursera to answer the weekly task. Yep, so they really work together to make sure if you're doing yeah. the MOOCs first, then you're going onto the Canvas platform and getting that, that foundational knowledge into the real world situations. And I know we are coming up to the end. We do have an IMBA uh, webinar coming up at uh, 6 p.m. Central Time. So if you are interested in that, you could definitely hop onto that uh, webinar as well. But again, thank you all so much, Cassio. Again, a huge thank you to you. It was so helpful just getting all the information about the course from you as well. So thank you so much. Thank you, thank you everyone. Bye-bye.